Hello everyone, let's try to be a cheat code ninja today. In this problem, we are given an array and we have to find the subarray with the largest sum. For example, if we take this subarray, its sum would be 0. And if we consider this subarray, its sum would be 3. And out of all the possible subarrays, this subarray would have the maximum sum of 6. Let's try to come up with an intuitive solution for this. Well, the very obvious brute force way to solve this problem would be to start at each and every point and consider all the subarrays starting from that point and find the maximum. For example, we'll start at the 0th index and find all the subarrays starting from there. And after that, we'll start at the first index and check all the subarrays starting from there. The time complexity of this would be O of n square. Let's try to optimize this. Let's have a look at this subarray. Its sum would be the sum of these two elements. But if we take a look at this negative 3, we see that it is not adding any value to the sum. In fact, it is decreasing the value from the sum. So if we would have just considered the sum of 4 alone, it would be higher than the sum of these two numbers. Now if we take this subarray for example, the sum of first two numbers is minus 2. So if we add it to 4, we get a value lesser than 4. So our subarray sum would be higher if we just take 4 alone. Similarly, if we take this subarray, our subarray sum would be higher if we don't consider minus 1. But on the other hand, if we take this subarray, the sum of these two numbers is 3. So if we add it to 2, our subarray sum would be higher than if we had just considered 2 individually. This is because our first part is contributing to a positive sum in the subarray. Similarly, if we consider this subarray, the first part is contributing a positive sum to the subarray. Hence, it makes sense to include it. So somehow, if we could reverse this problem, and for each number, if we could find the maximum subarray sum ending over there, we could make a decision whether to include it for the next number or not. So whenever the maximum sum ending at a particular number is negative, since if we add it to the next number, it will only lead to a smaller result, we can skip it from the subarray of the next number. Let's calculate the maximum ending at each index. For 0th index, there are no previous numbers and we have to include this, so the maximum will be the number itself. For our next number, we have two choices, whether to include the previous maximum and add it to our current number, or just ignore the previous maximum and just consider the current number. Since the previous maximum is negative, we'll just consider our number individually. For our next number, we again have two choices, whether to include the previous maximum and sum it with our current number, or ignore the previous maximum and just consider the current number individually. Since our previous maximum is positive, we'll include it. For our next number, our previous maximum is negative, so we'll ignore it. For this number, our previous maximum is positive, so we'll include it. Similarly, for this number, our previous number is positive, so we'll add it with our current number. Similarly, for this number, we'll include our previous maximum. Even for this negative number, our previous maximum is positive, so we'll include it. And finally, for our last number, we'll include the previous maximum. Out of all these numbers that we have calculated, the maximum ending value is 6 and that will be the answer. Let's see how we can calculate the maximum ending value at a certain index if we already know the previous maximum ending values. So if we take this number 4, we have two options whether to include the previous maximum with the current number or just consider the current number individually. So to derive the result for this index, we need to have previously computed results. So this is actually a dynamic programming problem where the current result depends on the result for the previous index. And since the result for an index depends only on the result for the previous index, rather than storing all the values in memory, we could only store the previous result and then use it. The time complexity of this would be O of n because we only have to go through the numbers 1 and the space complexity would be constant because we only have to store the previous result. Let's implement our solution. Since we are trying to find the maximum, let's initialize our result to be minus infinity. Let's initialize our maximum previous ending value to be 0. Now we'll go through all the numbers in the array. And for our maximum previous ending value for this number, we'll take the maximum of our current number individually with the sum of our previous ending value with our current number. And after that, we'll update our result to be the maximum of our result and our previous ending value. And once we are done going through all the numbers, we can return our result. We are now done with our solution. 
I would recommend you to check the dynamic programming playlist to solve more such problems. If this video was helpful, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more such content. Thanks for watching.